Hello everyone, my name's Sun Crypto Lord, and this is the exclusive one-on-one interview and insight to now I know I'm gonna say this wrong, uh Ziot or Ziotri uh and the Ziot team. Uh the person that we have here today, everyone knows his name is Owl or Apoc, or however you want to say it, whatever you want to say. Guys, welcome. Al, how are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Thanks for having me. Uh, definitely glad to be here. I mean, it's been a long time coming, uh, three weeks, uh, pretty much. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it, it has been a long time coming. People have been wanting to know, you know, a little bit more about what you're doing. Uh, we've even had people trying to fish for uh, fish for answers. Who knows, maybe copy pasta, anything like that. So, so yeah, um, tell me about yourself. Tell us, tell the people about Al. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I definitely agree. There's um, been an air of mystery about the, um, about the project and about uh, myself and about kind of the, the rotating faces that they see around the community. I am an old school uh, Linux junkie. I was... Uh, working on modems back in the 90s, uh, helped build the original framework for the internet. And now I am working in cryptocurrencies. So working in cryptocurrencies, how, like, when did you first get into cryptocurrencies? Can you tell the people about that? Yeah, I mean, everybody um, in my circle definitely knew about Bitcoin and kind of the emerging cryptocurrency market as far back as 2010, 2011. And um, it's actually funny because one of the guys on my team, I actually bounced the idea off of mining Bitcoin uh, back in, gosh, like late 2010, early 2011. And he told me that the ship had sailed on that one. So we ended up uh, passing on that side hobby of which, uh, you know, we don't, we don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I've definitely had my eyes on Bitcoin since, uh, since the, the very, very early days and watching it go from, you know, $30 to 600 and then back down has been, uh, you know, an emotional roller coaster to say the least. Yeah, I think uh, I think most people in the space now um, they have been through that little bit of an emotional roller coaster. You know, whether you whether you were here from uh, 2000, uh, 2010, 2011, or even if you're someone who's been here um, over the past six six to eight months. You know, there's, a, there's absolutely been a, yeah, absolutely there's been quite a bit of ups and downs. I mean, even with um, you know the DeFi market. Um, I still personally think there's only, um, you know, a very small percentage of people who've been in crypto that are inside the DeFi market now. So, but hey, that's, that's my opinion. That's what I'm looking at. Right. I mean, even with our own coin, you know, this thing started off at 80 to 1200 and then back down to 200. And I mean, it's a, it's a volatile market. Absolutely. Now, for the people that are out there, um, DeFi or DeFi or how a decentralized finance. What's your understanding? Can you explain it a little bit more for the people who don't have a complete understanding of it? Yeah, I mean, DeFi really to me is, you know, putting more logic into the actual smart contracts that run on the Ethereum network. And I think that um, although this is popular on the Ethereum network right now, over the next, you know, 12 to 24 months, I think we're going to see this propagate out into other chains and become much more chain agnostic, which will be interesting to see if, you know, atomic swaps or cross chain um, activity really picks up as a result of actually having a useful network running between them because of the the layer two applications that run on these uh these chains that that aren't agnostic right now so i think we're uh i think i definitely think we're at the beginning um of this yeah. and i think uh i definitely just want to add that I, I think that a lot of people are still reeling from 2018 the collapse of the ico market which is yeah. understandable but mm -hmm. i think we're uh yeah, I think we're at the beginning here. I mean, there's so many possibilities for, for many different directions this can go. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, I believe so too. I mean, you, you've 
the way I look at it is you've had banks up until 2008, 2009 when the, when the global financial markets like collapsed and maybe even starting today as well, you know, we saw Tesla just drop what, 20, 21% on open or close, <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah. And I was just, I was just looking at the chart and I saw, I saw the gap and I was just like, wow, okay, wow. no problems. And now you've got decentralized finance where, you know, you got people that can just come in and, and loan things out, um, you know, make their, make their own returns and all that kind of stuff. And it's give, I personally think it's giving power back to the people. Absolutely. And I think that it's, it, you know, I think this really goes back to the original founding principle that Bitcoin was founded on is that, you know, the power shouldn't be in the hands of the few, it should be in the hands of the many. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going back to my experience with, with watching internet technologies really be birthed, um, you know, one thing I've found is that if something doesn't, if a software component doesn't work because the infrastructure isn't laid for it, people often assume that that, that software component will never work. And what we found is that it actually just takes time. And through these cycles, the stuff that didn't work in the first cycle because the infrastructure wasn't there doesn't mean that that same technology or software component isn't going to work in the next cycle. So if you think back to crypto kitties and the gaming market that everybody tried to, to really make popular in the first one, in the first cycle, um, I think that we're going to see many new um, technologies come out in this cycle that didn't work in the first cycle, is what I'm trying to say there. Yeah, no, I, just, I, I completely understand. Now, crucify me, please. Um, Ziot, is that how you, how it's pronounced? The first one. <laughs> so the way that that I pronounce it, and the way that it, um, you know I feel it's, it's supposed to be pronounced is it's, it it is Ziotri, and yeah. our first token is, is Ziot, and the yeah. second token is a Biziot. Yes. Okay, so I am correct in Ziot. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I knew I, I, the, the whole time I knew I was correct. I was like, no, I, it can't be X um, IOT or IOTRI or anything like that. <laughs> I knew I, I knew I was right. And there was even the conversation in the Discord quite a few times on how to pronounce it. And I don't know whether I offended you uh, because it is your baby. Um, but uh, yeah, where I turned around and saying how, you know, re and all that kind of stuff. So, but we're just having a little bit of fun and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so with Zia, now you did just put out, you put, you dropped this on me literally minutes before we started this <laughs> and you had me scrambling because I'm like, I want to stick to the time frame that you told me. Right, um, right, right. That. Sorry, man. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. And you had, I, I didn't know whether it was getting, like I thought at first when I saw the, um, when I saw the Discord announcement, I was like, oh, okay, this seems like, you know, just a, just a quick Discord thing, whatnot. So I quickly read through it. And then at the bottom of it, I saw that you had the Twitter post and I'm like, oh, here we go. So then I've gone to the Twitter <laughs> post and I've seen a PDF and I'm like, oh, thank, thanks, Al. So yeah, so I quickly read through it, um, and we, which is very understandable with what you said. We won't go too much into that because uh, the focus today is more on uh, what's ahead as opposed to what's behind and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, Ziot and the team, at, or Ziotry, sorry, as uh, as the whole platform, um, Ziotry and the team. Where are you guys at right now at this moment in time? I know we've got Ziot and then we've got B Ziot, but then everyone's trying to find out information on Re or Ri or whatever you want to say uh, say it on its own. Where are you guys at right now? So. We're playing re pretty close to the chest. Um, and, you know, I think it's understandable and I'm absolutely willing to take as much flack as the market will throw at me um, to keep re as guarded as possible just after the yams and the hams and the pastas and the tacos. Like we really, um, in the team that I talk to every single day, who I trust with my projects and my secrets, we all feel that we are bringing something that isn't just a clone. It's not just a, a regurgitation of a previous idea that somebody else came up with. 
we're trying to bring something novel and new to the market. And we all feel really strongly about that. So we are excited about RE. We are excited to talk about BZOT and ZOT. And we definitely apologize for the confusion we've thrown at the market for introducing a new token after our old token. And it's kind of like the same token, but it's got a different supply. And, you know, we really feel strongly that, you know, the answers to these questions, they are valid, but it's just going to take time for us to clarify them. Yeah. Coming from, uh, you know, being in crypto for uh, a few years myself, um, and I'm very analytical myself. And, you know, I've read through uh, both your light papers. Um, now, Thank you. They're, they're on purpose. They're called light papers on purpose, um, if anyone hasn't guessed, uh, because you're not, as you said just then, you're you're holding quite a lot close to your chest because you don't want to bring out too much information because of all the hams, the yams and all that kind of stuff. And you just don't want, you just don't want a copy pasta where, uh, you know, someone brings something in and we've we've already seen it. Um, People copying like, you know, your model that what you bought out, I mean, you guys are holding that close to your heart for a reason. Yeah. And you can even look at, at Sushi as an example of, you know, we just dropped an idea on the market and Sushi really took that idea with a clone of yams and made it a reality. And I'm really happy that it was successful, but I'm also really sad that it was Chef Nomi that brought that idea to market and then rug pulled, well, I don't know, 10,000 people or pulled off what 38,000 F out of them. I mean, it's just, it's really unfortunate with some of these characters and the yeah. unsafe attitudes that are in the market right now. I was, uh, I was, I was jokingly, um, uh, I was having a joke with, uh, with a uh, good friend of mine um, who's also in the crypto space. And we turn around and we thought, you know, this, this, I'm not going to name names and all that kind of stuff, but this person had, um, had, you know, 10, $15 million in front of them in, in front of their eyes. And from what everyone's seen is the, the person is a young, is a young person. And we were just joking that, you know, mum mum was probably looking over the shoulder saying, get rid of it all now and buy us all a house <laughs> or something <laughs> like, or something like that. Of course, for for a lot of people who who just work, you know, normal and all that kind of stuff, if they if they see something like that, it's extremely tempting. It, it going from zero to that much in the space of how long was it? Two three weeks. Two three weeks. Yeah, I mean, it was it came out after our first airdrop, and it's already done before our platform release. So. And thank you for the airdrop. Right. For those people out there, I don't know. We're going to go into this as well. For those people out there that keep saying, you know, the S word um, and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you guys don't realize Owl and whoever else was involved dropped 15 Ziots to how many was it? 150 uh, people? It was 153 just random people that happened to see the tweet or join yeah. the Discord or, you know, it just, it was. Uh, and at yeah, the height, it, at the height of it, but there, there was like almost 17 grand or 18 grand or something like that. <laughs> like it, it, it's, it, it's just like, I don't think people realize. And then they're like, Oh yeah, but uh, he, you know, they uh no, there's still, there's still scammers and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, hang on, but who provided the liquidity for, for all these guys to sell to even yeah. the guys even the guys at the start who thought, you know, oh yeah, sweet, it's just another airdrop. Let me just get rid of it, and they got rid of it for ten dollars each. They still got yeah. how much is that? Well, there's still one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the airdrop market right now and what some of these guys are doing, you know, they're trying to to push out airdrops for twenty five or fifty dollars, and it's actually funny because right after our airdrop, Kyle Samani um, tweeted out about how if you're going to be a successful DeFi project, you need to give away 50% of your tokens equity to the market. And that's definitely something that we already had in mind before we launched the Ziatri project. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, uh, I can definitely say that, you know, one of the best moments in, in the best moments of this project has been just some of the, the heartfelt messages that people have sent me 
with regards to like not being able to pay their car insurance or their rent or their meals. And that Ziat airdrop like was life changing for them. I, like there was one guy who uh, bought his mom's mortgage and he paid, he paid her mortgage for three months, wasn't it? Well, some paid her mortgage that. for three months, still bought himself like fifteen thousand dollars worth of computer parts, and then paid wow. like five thousand dollars. Yeah, it was insane. I mean, just it was just insane. And that really, you know, I could definitely say that like that like reaction definitely like resonates with with me. And you know, it's it would be easy to turn this project into a pre-sale, pre-mine, full-on greed you know, take advantage of the market. And that's just not who we are. That's just not, yeah. not what we're, uh, we're interested in. I mean, we're definitely just, just want to play this one, one straight and narrow. Yeah. I think, I think um, the, the people in the social media platforms and, and the discords and all that, I think what they've seen from you now, albeit sometimes, um, you know, some messages can get, uh, can, I mean, get seen differently from certain people and uh, and everyone uh you know we did speak earlier um everyone is different um and everyone takes things on differently now seeing you speak and the fact that you don't want people to hype this right now just shows that you want organic growth this is my opinion from an objective view i see that you're trying to create something that's as organic as possible that's going to help the the small people um as well as you know benefit the larger people to a certain extent uh, but just make it more fair because it, even if you look at if you go to the ziotry um well you already know about it if you go to the ziotry web uh, website you can see there it's a uh, defi or defi reimagined what's that all about well again i can't get into too many details right now um, yeah Guys, I, just so you know, I'm trying to press for as much information as possible, just so everyone knows. But, but Owl is, Owl is Owl's not going to give us too much. But yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, it's when you talk about um, giving retail and giving retail investors the opportunity to lock up their assets, but on a crowded highway, you know, you charge people more for the the gas than their actual harvest is worth like that just doesn't seem fair to us yep and i mean that's just one example of many that i could go into but we you know we really we've made it our mission to try and do the best that we can with what we have and and grow organically and i mean that also kind of goes back to like you know if we have unrealistic expectations by the community in the beginning then you know then it's it's not going to help us complete the mission. Yeah. So and, and we found that with you know, um, like we we haven't paid any Twitter profiles or or crypto profiles for any kind of publicity. We haven't paid any tokens for any marketing, and we still have a massive rabid fan base. And we found that that having the the Twitter profiles you know talk about our coin before it's ready, um, it really just it it actually hurts us more than it helps us when we're actually trying to build a, a product on the back end yeah we were just a clone and and you know we had that platform ready and we weren't developing technology then i would see it differently and say yeah give me as much publicity as i want i can drop this whenever i want but yeah uh, but yeah it's just not the case so and and what you what you touched on there where you had um where you spoke about larger twitter personalities um tweeting about it and you weren't re you weren't ready for that i don't think um some of the team were ready for that and then it builds this expectation as you said in certain individuals which is not what you want to do um, until everything's pretty much ready to go and we we see that you know uh people calling in names you've got the haters there's rumors going out you know number one scammer we already debunked that <laughs> I mean, you, you gave out, you, you gave out personally, even from your, from your own self. And there's, there's even chain analysis that's done there where, you know, all you've ever done is put money back into it, into liquidity. Yeah. And that's the shocking part with this, uh, you know, working on the blockchain is you can trace all the transactions from the original mint back. And, 
you know, especially after the BZ at launch, you can see me put the liquidity back in the the F Zyot pool. And yeah. you know, like I'm 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 all in this. As far as my crypto portfolio, I'm one hundred percent holding up Ziatri right now until we get the liquidity pools up from the the, the liquidity mines. And yeah, and I'm okay with that. But I, yeah, I, I'll I'll just add I've got a very tiny small bit. <laughs> I've, I've got a tiny small bit, but you can, I, for a quick second, every little bit helps. Yeah, I will. I will say this for that quick second where you had to switch which wallet you were using. I felt special <laughs> for a minute. I did feel special <laughs> for a minute. Uh, yeah. So on, on this note, I, I do want to just say that, you know, starting your own crypto organization or project or business or whatever you want to call it, it's really this has really been an eye-opening experience for me and friends have turned on me friends have taken the money and run you know mm -hmm. i've i've expected things out of people for for you know equity in the ziatri project that they haven't delivered on and they bailed on me names have been called so and and in in the grand scheme of things we're just a small project and yeah. um and i just can only imagine what kind of grief you know has been thrown at guys like justin sun or charles hoskinson or vitalik you know and in the kind of vitriol that they have to to put up with in starting their projects and yeah um, really been an eye-opening experience for me yeah i think they do cop a lot of flack but there's a reason because they're doing something that's that's right. the way that i look at it right and yeah my motto has always been you know what this project might fail everything might fall apart but it's not going to fall apart from lack of trying yeah 100 percent um now let's talk about a couple of other things um so you, you we've spoken about you being called a scammer um number where the heck did the rumor come of that you're 16 years old that you're a 16 year old I, developer where did I, that come I, from i legitimately i have no idea i have legitimately no idea i honestly that i can't I can't tell you what kind of mud was thrown around Twitter. I can't tell you what kind of things have been said because I try to ignore it. And, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's just, it's not beneficial to me to get let that kind of um, just miscreant behavior get stuck in my head. And uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to slow down as a result of, of one guy mad about our light paper or, you know, one guy mad because we aren't moving fast enough. Like, you know, this is this is about something bigger than than one person who bought our tokens and and who could have exited profitably. So, yep. you know, a lot of people in the crypto sphere they refuse to accept responsibility for their own actions, and yep. I just don't. I I want to. I don't want that that guy to be me. Yeah, one hundred percent. And that's and, and you know what? That's your um. The, that's the way that you deal with things and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's people that go out there happily and we all know it. Um, and this goes for every single person in on CT or any crypto platform on Facebook. If you're on Facebook or anything like that, everyone knows that the top shillers, the people with the biggest accounts and all that 99% of the time, they will buy something that they like, which is, which is all well and good. But then once they once they finish purchasing, then they will shill it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, you accumulate and then you distribute, right? Yeah, 100 percent And look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shy away from the fact that um, you know, back in uh, back in early 2017 when I, I or mid 2017 when I got onto Twitter, um, and I didn't know what the heck I was doing on CT. I knew a little bit about the crypto markets um, prior to jumping on CT, but I just started seeing all this shilling left, right, and center. And I, I, if I'm, I would lie to you guys if I turned around and I said that I never once looked at a tweet from a big account or any account, therefore, and said, you know what, YOLO, let's market buy. And I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> I've done. I, I, I guarantee every single person has done that. Absolutely. They, you know, they, I, I swear some of the charts that these guys post are more artistic to sell their <laughs> point than they are actually accurate representations of what the market's doing. 
Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, it's fine. I think it's a sort of a rite of passage to go through the crypto crypto Twitter bonanza. Yeah, but at the end of the day, as you said, I think you just got to cop it on the chin. Whether whether you you made a bad choice, you know, on other stuff or whatnot, everyone's got to be responsible for their own actions. We can't just blame other people. Right. So okay. So now, um, moving moving more towards the platform. I know you've already spoken a little bit about it. There's we've spoken about Z, uh, Ziot. Um, you say Ziot. I'm an Aussie. Uh, we say we probably say Ziot. Uh, we can say Ziot. I'll say Ziot for you. So it's the the understanding of how everything ties in together. Now, I know Ziot and B Ziot. Everyone knows, and there there's, there was confusion, and it was cleared up by yourself. But I think where people are lacking the understanding of how all this ties in is the fact that if they if they have a slight understanding um, of the crypto sphere and how, as you mentioned, gas and all that, and you know, people's harvest not being worth nearly as much as what the gas is cost. And from what you've said in the past, now I haven't been revealed anything by you. You've even kept it close to your heart from uh, from me, who's trying to probe. But I can kind of gather what's going to go on with uh, with re as well. It's all now. Can you say this? Once re is dropped and the full white paper is dropped, will people have a complete understanding? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, by that point, when we drop the white paper, the platform, we drop re, we've got the closed beta going on or, or the, the full platform deployment. Absolutely. It's going to all be clear. And I think that what we've done a really good job on is that we've dropped the breadcrumbs to the community as we were able to, and as we hit these milestones. And you know, all it takes is a keen eye to read the light papers, look at what we're dropping, and you'll know exactly what we're doing. And I just, I'm a little bit befuddled that, um, that nobody's figured it out. Because I mean, I'm extremely vocal, I'm extremely active in the Discord and the Telegram. And you know, there's nothing that would, behoove me more than than to, to just tell everybody this is what we're building i want to tell you because i if i tell you then i know that you're going to be just as excited as i am about it but i just can't do that because i have to make sure that we get this out there and we've spent too much time building this platform to let it all fall apart right now yeah i i will say i've worked it out um, I'm not going to say I, I, I'm not going to say on here because you have been very vocal um, and I do watch a lot. I watch Twitter. I watch Discord. I watch all channels and I try and be objective as possible. I've read both the both the uh, light papers, the Zyot and the and B Zyot light paper, and I've read them multiple times. And I think there are a couple of people who, who are out there that have figured it out. And I think even, even if you go to, um, where was it? I think it was off topic or general or one of them. And someone actually mentioned something and then you told them exactly or something like that. <laughs> they got it. And then, but the thing is, everyone else didn't get that. Is that correct? Right, right. I mean, like you really, like DeFi is really presenting us with a really, really interesting um like infrastructure to build on. And, and I think that, that it's really getting lost on people, the, the fundamental backbone that's being built right here. And they're getting caught up in their yields and their harvests and their farms and their yams. And they're not looking at the technology that's available for us to build on. And, and I, I just think if everybody took a step back and they just looked at the bigger picture, they would see a really, really, really good golden opportunity for many different companies to come up right now. And I think we are seeing that. I mean, when you look at, you know, I'm just gonna drop a couple names, but like BZRX, uh, SNX, the stuff they're doing over at Curve and Base. I mean, it's all really interesting stuff. Um, yeah. I don't wanna be the guy that gives away the secret sauce to all these companies, but, uh, but it's really interesting. And, and uh, I haven't felt this excited about a technology in, in a long, long time. So we're definitely excited to keep building and, uh, and keep doing what we're doing. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that is the thing. Everyone is getting caught up in the, you know, 600% in one day. Um, and they, they are forgetting about that, um, that organic growth and the organic gains and, and, and whatnot. I mean, 600%, as you, as you say, can go, can come and go just like that, which what we've seen with a lot of, a, a lot of the um, crypto markets and a lot of the DeFi coins and all that kind of stuff, we, we've all seen it. I mean, what was it the other day? There was a, we won't name it, but there was a rebase issue and someone sold their tokens at the right second and they took away 750 ETH. Wow. Oh yeah, gosh, I remember that one. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's sad that the, it's just a sad state of the industry when you get, you know, a lot of the the big name Twitter profiles showing a company with a, a mistake like that. And yeah. um, again, I mean, that just reinforces our plan of not getting the shills on board until yeah. we're sure that we're not going to rebase and take everybody's money away. Um, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, so is there anything anything exciting that you can talk about um, that's in the works now? Can you give us any little teasers of anything that hasn't been spoken about yet? Or you can't, not yet? Well, yeah, uh, we talked about, um, well, I just posted on Twitter today in that Medium article that we're opening up closed beta. We're still finalizing the last few lines of code, but our ECR devs are working as hard as they can. And um, we're going to get that closed beta out there. It's going to be a random sample from our uh, Ethereum addresses of, of Zout holders and um, BZout holders. But uh, yep. I'm not going to go too much into detail of how we're going to pick those guys out, but it's going to yep. be a good random sample and, and hopefully everybody's happy. So hang on, let, let's try and get some here. So what about if they're active? Would they have a better chance or is it just randomized? Well, I think uh, we might make a couple exceptions for some of the guys that have been active in our community since day one, but you know, we really are about kind of an anonymized sample. Um, but there's definitely a couple guys we got our eyes on. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sounds good. I'm, a, I'm actually quite excited. Um, I've been here pretty much from the start. I mean, you, you threw me into a, a little position, you know, um, and you know, I'm very thankful for that. Um, and uh, excited to see what's to come. Um, plenty to come. I, I did see you did post on uh, on the Discord that you know in the next week or two. Um, so you'll have the closed beta, and then also possibly the platform launch, which I think everyone's pretty excited for. Um, moving forward, let's uh, let's keep an eye on Zayat, guys. So you know you know what uh, or how to say it now. Uh, it's Zayat. It's not X I O T or anything like that. Um, <laughs> re- yeah, really excited for Re as well. Um, and apart from that, we should do this again sometime soon. If not, hopefully, maybe you know one of the one of the larger accounts can get you one. Um, and try and press you for a little bit more information. Maybe you'll be more willing with them, but who knows? Maybe closer to the date or maybe even on launch date have something. So, but uh, yeah, great talking, Al. Um, I actually, before, before we go, before we go, sorry, last thing. It's not on my, it's not on my notes here. The robot. <laughs> Do I own the trademark on the robot? Okay, are we allowed to say? Yeah, yeah, I, that's my robot. That's uh, I, I the, created that thing and uh, I paid for it. And yeah, it's uh, that's uh, that's mine. And okay. um, there you not have stolen it. Stolen or or anything. I, I'd like to officially lay that that rumor to rest. Okay, cool. So for those of you who already know, um, then there you go. So, anyways, great talking, Al. Thank you All very right, great much for coming on. We'll speak to you soon. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.